In this Blender rendering tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use a feature called Anisotropy. It's such an awesome feature. If we look at this rendering right here, we can see this particular pattern of reflection off these buttons right here, and that is an anisotropic reflection. Let me come over here and show you what this looks like. If I just take this animation and move it back and forward, you can see on those buttons that clear anisotropic reflection pattern. And if I pull up a camera rendering, you can see there's some anisotropy here and a little bit over here. It's a really, really awesome rendering function. So let's take a look at this from basic conceptual understanding, and then I'll show you how technically to implement it in Blender's material system, because it's actually a little bit weird if you don't know what's going on. In this basic start file right here, I've got this donut shape. And if I turn on the renderer, we have a single light source in the scene. We can see it reflecting off the surface. It's a very simple setup. And if I begin to pull out the camera, we can see other concentric rings there, and they are each in turn reflecting that single light source. However, as I pull way back and we look at this from a really pulled back standpoint, we can see that each of those concentric rings ends up forming a particular pattern of light called anisotropic reflections. And that just means that a given surface has an underlying roughness pattern that isn't what we call heterogeneous, meaning it's not just bouncing light off in all directions. It's causing a particular pattern of reflection because of the regularly ordered way in which the very small scale structures of the surface are causing the light to scatter. In this particular case, what we want to learn is a term called strands. Strands are basically a direction or a microscopic feature that is causing light to bounce off in a particular way. And in this case, the strands are just these individual tubes that we can clearly see individually are reflecting light, but at a macroscopic scale, they are forming that pattern. So what Blender's material system does is in the anisotropic feature right here, it attempts to emulate these features at a material level. And so that's what we're going to explore. So I'm going to open up our start file here. And what I have is a very basic scene with two sphere types of objects. And I've got a couple of lights. Let me turn on the interactive renderer right here. Now what I've done is I've created two spheres with very obvious concentric rings on them. And when we explore this, let me come over and zoom in a little bit. We can see that in fact, I've got concentric rings here. Let me turn off the interactive renderer and we can see those clear rings. So what I did was I just created these rings based off a sphere in order to conceptually understand this strand function. And it's very clear when we have these rings that it's producing anisotropic reflections in one direction or anisotropic reflections in another. But we want to now just have a regular sphere where we implement this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, let me turn these off here, and I'm going to turn off my examples and turn on two other examples that I have right here where we have a material where we've got anisotropy happening. And I also happen to have a material mapped to help us understand what that underlying strand direction does. But what I want to do for right now is I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to hide this one. And on this one, we're going to create a new material. So I will come down to the materials area right here and I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to create a new material slot and then I'm going to add a material to it. And we'll just call this working or basic metal. We'll just do a really basic metal like that. Now I'm going to switch over here and we're going to come over to the shading node. And what I have is I have set up the UV map editor. And we're going to come to that in just a little bit and take a look at it. But down here in the shading area, I have access to the principled BSDF. And I want to create a basic metallic material. So it's basic color is going to be sort of a grayish color. And then I want to set it to metallic mode. So I'm going to bring metallic all the way up. And in fact, I'm going to take specular all the way up to 1.0. That's not really going to have much bearing in what we're going to be doing, but it's good practices. 
So on roughness, we're going to leave that at 0.5 and we're going to turn keep anisotropy off and then we're just going to turn this on. So it's actually pretty pretty rough. So let's come in here and turn the roughness down a little bit. 0.5 is actually pretty high roughness. And we'll get that down so it's right about, I don't know, 1.2, 1.3-ish area. And we see it's pretty uniformly reflective. But what we want is the reflections to be biased. And that's what those strands do. The anisotropic function does is it takes and biases. So if we just come over here now and turn on anisotropy by slowly scaling it up, watch those reflections. Watch the specular highlights right here. They will begin to bias and we end up with a rendering that looks very much like when I had those example objects up here. In fact, let me move that to the side right here and I will turn on that example where I have just tubes that have been formed around this object and we get basically the same type of thing happening. So by default, when you turn on strands on something like a sphere object, it's going to be automatically orienting these virtual strands in a particular direction. And the way we determine that is by looking at objects local. So if it's at default or global, select the object and turn it to local. And by default, the anisotropic function is going to look at the local z-axis in order to determine the default strand direction. And it's going to put those strands in sort of a north to south pole going direction. So that's the first important thing to look at. But what if we want the anisotropy to be in the other way, where the anisotropy is going sort of north to south, meaning the reflections are being deflected and bent north to south. So what we do is we tell the material system to reorient the strand direction. And the strand direction can be changed in single degrees. But what I want you to imagine is that 0 degrees is over here, and 1.0 is a 360 degree rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and we're going to tell the rotation to change to 0.25, which is, by equivalent, a 90 degree rotation. And there we've rotated the strands by 90 degrees. So if we were to turn off the example sphere and we turn on, let me move this over here, all I did was I rotated the strands so that they're going around the object. So that's basically how that works. By default, the material system also wants to know a tangent direction for an object. The default tangent direction is the object's local z-axis. But if we want that to change, if we want that to be different, we can add that in. So I'm going to come down here and add, and I'm going to search for tangent. We're just going to click tangent right here. And then this gets plugged into the tangent node connector right there. And you can see by default it's set to Z, and so that gives us the exact same feature. We can also change so that it's going to operate not using sort of a procedural mechanism for putting a radial set of strands around the object, if you want to think about it that way, where they're being projected onto the object, but where we're going to use the object's UV map to determine the strand direction. And this is where some interesting possibilities get started, and I'm just going to show you that in a very basic way next. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have us switch from radial over to UV map. And initially you're not going to see anything change. But what I want to do is I'm going to have a switch back to a material that I have built in already, where I've got a similar material set up here, but I've added a couple of extra components to it that map this bitmap right here. Okay, so this is essentially just another way of visualizing the strands. So let me come over here and turn off this because we're not using that now. And we're going back to its default orientation where when we come down here and we look at anisotropic rotation, it's back to zero. If I press the tab key to enter into polygon edit mode, we're gonna come over here and I have the UV editor here and we can see in the background 
this bitmap that's being applied. I'm going to press the A key in order to highlight all the polygons and then we can see the corresponding UV polygons over here. So the first thing to note is that when you are using anisotropy in UV mapping mode, it says that the strands are mapped along the V direction, meaning up and down, vertical. So that is how the default strands are mapped, and they are mapped onto the object's UV map and then transferred to the 3D object in exactly the same way that a bitmap is. So what we want to do is we want to come over here and these are the default UVs for this sphere, just exactly as they were created. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and select all of these and then I'm going to come to the rotation function and we're going to rotate the UV map. So I'm just going to start rotating this and look at the sphere as I slowly rotate this. Look how the sphere is changing and in fact look how the anisotropic reflections are reorienting as I bring this down to a 90 degree rotation and then I will just make sure it's exactly there 90 degrees. And now the biasing of the reflections which is a 90 degree bias to the strand direction is going along the direction that I want. Okay so that is how you set up anisotropy in Blender. A look now how the material system operates at a little bit more of a nuanced way relative to the roughness function. So let's take a look how the roughness function interacts with the anisotropic function right now. Let's say I want this anisotropic reflection to be a little bit more broad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the anisotropy and pull it down just a little bit and then I'm going to take the roughness function and I'm going to increase it a little bit. So what you'll want to do is just play around with these two values in conjunction with each other to get sort of the look and the feel that you want. If you try and take roughness too high and the anisotropic too high, it will tend to do things that don't look quite right. But you can just play around with these two values until you get basically the look that you want for your anisotropic reflections.